When I was a kid, my family would go camping in the woods every year. We all loved it because it was a chance to get away from our city lives and enjoy the peace and beauty of nature. They would invite some of their friends to join us, which made it even more fun. One Christmas, when I was about six years old, we went camping. Our campsite was filled with laughter, the sound of crackling fire, and the smell of roasted marshmallows. There were eight kids, including me, and we couldn't wait to explore the woods around us. Our parents trusted us enough to let us wander a little bit. We had an amazing day, filled with exciting adventures and the thrill of discovering new things. We ran through the trees, feeling the leaves brush against our faces, and listened to the birds chirping in the distance. Every so often, our parents would call us back to camp using walkie-talkies they had given us. This was their way of making sure we didn't go too far away. But one day, something strange happened. All of a sudden, a voice started talking on our walkie-talkies. It was a man's voice, but none of us recognized it. He said he was Santa and that he was trying to find us to give us presents. We were so excited and couldn't believe that we might actually get to meet Santa. Without thinking, we ran back to camp as fast as we could. We were bursting with excitement, imagining the joy of getting presents from Santa himself. When we reached the campsite, we told our parents what had happened. They looked amused and confused at the same time. But then they started to get worried. They took the walkie-talkie from us and whispered to each other in concerned voices. We could tell that something was wrong. They told us that Santa wouldn't be able to talk to us through the walkie-talkies, and that it must have been someone playing a trick on us. As kids, we were disappointed. Our dreams of meeting Santa were crushed, and we were left feeling scared about the stranger in the woods. From then on, our parents didn't let us wander around anymore. At the time, we didn't understand how serious the situation was. But now, as an adult, I can't help but feel scared when I think about it. The idea of a stranger watching us from the shadows still haunts me. I was camping in the very top part of Northern California, deep in the woods. It was early in the morning, before the sun came up, I really had to go to the bathroom. Since there were no bathrooms around, I walked down a trail and found a small open area next to a blackberry bush. As I squatted down, I started to feel nervous. I heard loud crashing noises coming from the trees, and a little bit of light from the sunrise started to come through. I was curious, so I looked carefully over the blackberry bush. I was horrified to see a huge bear, probably weighing around 500 pounds, only 50 feet away from me, looking right at me. I felt panicked in every part of my body. I tried to quietly back away, but I accidentally stepped on a twig that made a loud sound. The bear and I stared at each other, frozen in fear. I quickly tried to think of a way out. I knew I couldn't let the bear overpower me. I gathered up all my courage and raised my arms, trying to make myself look bigger, and I let out a really loud scream. But the bear didn't seem scared at all. It slowly started walking towards me. I was scared, but I didn't want to give up. I crouched as low as I could, behind the blackberry bush, hoping the bear wouldn't see me. Without thinking, I ran as fast as I could, while still crouching down. I was so scared that the bear might start chasing me, but I knew I had to keep going. I wanted to get as far away as possible before the bear realized I was running. Surprisingly, my strange plan worked. The bear followed me for only about 15 feet, before deciding it wasn't worth it. It let me go. I felt so relieved when I stopped and caught my breath. I realized just how close I came to being the bear's breakfast. As I went back to my camp, I couldn't forget the scary encounter. It reminded me that there are dangers in the wild woods that I need to be aware of. I decided to go on a hike alone, away from the usual paths, a few miles behind my house. It was a beautiful day, the type that makes you want to explore nature. As I walked further into the woods, a sense of peace surrounded me. The rustling leaves and the gentle wind together made beautiful sounds of nature. The thick plants provided shade from the hot sun, and I enjoyed being alone. But then, out of nowhere, I saw it. I saw something white quickly move through the valley 
going as fast as a car on a highway. I was so scared that my heart skipped a beat. It was such a sudden and strange sight that it made me feel very scared. I tried to make sense of what I had just seen. What could it be? I thought about it, trying to find a logical reason. Maybe it was just light playing tricks on my eyes, or maybe I imagined it. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was not right. One idea that came to mind was a white car driving on a road that was far away, and the trees made it look like it was inside the woods. However, there were not any roads in the radius of 5 to 10 miles. It didn't make any sense, and it made me confused and scared. I couldn't help but wonder if I was losing my mind or if I truly saw something beyond reason. As I went back home, I couldn't stop thinking about what happened. The fear stayed with me and didn't go away. I tried to find answers, but the logical explanations didn't seem to fit. Even today, I can't forget that quick glimpse of the white figure. It was a moment that didn't make sense, and it made me feel very uneasy. I may never really know what I saw in those deep woods, but one thing is for sure, it changed the way I see the world around me forever. As the sun started to go down, I found myself driving through the South Island of New Zealand in my camper van. With the day coming to an end, I kept my eyes open for a good spot to camp. That's when I saw a big sign that said, Camping. I was interested, so I turned off the road and onto a gravel area. When I arrived, I started feeling uneasy. The scene in front of me was really beautiful, with a river, big rocks, and lots of trees. But what made me scared was the sight of many abandoned vehicles scattered around, slowly falling apart because of the weather. There were probably about 12 or 13 of them, and there weren't any signs of people. I was curious and scared at the same time. I couldn't help but wonder what happened to the people who owned these vehicles. It was so silent, and I couldn't see anyone around. Then I saw an empty field leading up a hill, and on top of the hill was a house that reminded me of the scary house in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The house looked like it was decaying, with peeling paint on its old walls, some windows of the house were covered. There was a shaky balcony, and I could have sworn I saw a very old chair moving back and forth on it. It looked like it was from a horror movie, and I couldn't stop thinking about bad things happening inside that broken down house. I trusted my instincts and left right away. I kept driving for another 30 minutes, searching desperately for a safer place to spend the night. It was dark outside now. Eventually, I ended up parking in the middle of a town because I just needed to feel safer around other people. But I couldn't sleep that night. The images of the abandoned vehicles and the old house kept replaying in my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something really disturbing about that place. I woke up to the cool morning air, excited for my daily run in the deep woods around our family cabin. The sun hadn't risen yet, so it was still dark and a bit spooky. As someone who enjoys running, I love the peace and quiet of the early morning. Starting my usual running route, I felt calm as my feet hit the ground over and over. The only sound I heard was my breathing. After about seven or eight minutes of running, a scary howl broke the silence. It echoed through the trees. I froze, trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. It seemed like it came from about 100 to 200 feet away. I couldn't move because I was so scared. Then, there was another noise. This time, it wasn't just one howl, it was many. I thought they were coyotes, but I wasn't sure. Even though I wanted to run away, something stopped me. I knew running blindly through the dark woods would only make things worse. So instead, I slowly went back the way I came, my heart pounding. Every time a twig snapped or leaves rustled, I got even more nervous. Finally, I made it back to the cabin, breathing heavily. I locked the door behind me and felt relieved. The experience had made me lose my confidence. From then on, I promised myself that I would never go into the woods without daylight. I used to enjoy going on long trips with my sister into the deep woods. We had our routine, our special spot where we would always reach a certain point in our journey. At that spot, like clockwork, 
a big and friendly German shepherd would show up out of nowhere and say hello to us. He was a very nice dog, and we considered him our friend. He would follow us around for a while before going on his own way. It was nice to see him, because it made us feel safe in the wild. But one day, things got scary. When we went into the woods like we had done so many times before, excited for our usual meeting with our furry friend. But he never came. We tried not to worry too much, thinking he might have been somewhere else. As we went deeper into the woods, we started talking about our missing friend. We wondered why he hadn't shown up, when suddenly, we found something awful. We saw our beloved German Shepherd lying dead on the ground. It was a horrifying sight, like he had been attacked by a group of wolves. His body was torn apart, but it seemed like the creature that hurt him didn't eat much of him. It was like they tore him apart and left him behind. We felt really scared as we stood there, trying to understand what had happened. And then, from far away, we heard it. A strange and creepy sound, like a big animal in pain or confused. It was far off at first, but it gave us chills. We stopped and listened very carefully. The sound came again, but closer this time. It was a scary cry that got louder with each time it happened. We looked at each other with fear, realizing that whatever was making that sound was coming closer. And then, as if to prove our worst fears, we heard it again, this time right on the other side of the hill we were on. The bone-chilling cry broke the silence of the woods, echoing through the trees. It was a sound that made us feel really scared. Without thinking twice, me and my sister started running, letting our instincts for survival guide us. We ran as fast as we could, not daring to look back, just wanting to escape that scary sound. We didn't stop running until we got on the trail that would lead us back to our car. When we reached our car, we got into it, and drove away. Sometimes, I think about what could have made that scary sound. I wonder what terrible things were in those woods that day. But deep inside, I know I made the right choice to run away. Some mysteries are better left unsolved especially when they threaten to ruin the feeling of being safe in our everyday lives. I woke up in the middle of the night during our hike and felt like I needed to go to the bathroom. Carefully, I got out of our tent, trying not to wake up my friend. The cold night air embraced me as I stepped outside, surrounded by darkness. To avoid walking blindly, I turned on my lamp and lit a cigarette. The warm glow comforted me in the blackness of the deep woods. I headed towards a nearby slope, thinking it would be a good place to do my business. I turned off my lamp while doing it. As I got closer, I felt a weird sensation. It felt like there were invisible eyes watching my every move. Ignoring the unease, I brushed it off as my imagination playing tricks on me in the dark. But when I turned on my lamp to see the area around me, the beam of light revealed a chilling sight. Just a few feet away, I saw an adult mountain lion and her two young cubs leaping across the creek bed. They moved as quietly as the night itself. The sight stunned me, fear rushing through my veins. I quickly went back to the safety of our tent, my heart racing. I woke up my friend and urgently told him what I had seen. We both understood the danger we were in, knowing these powerful predators could pose a threat. The rest of the night dragged on, filled with anticipation and fear. We stayed awake, on high alert, listening for any signs of danger. When the first rays of sunlight filtered through the thick trees, we gathered our courage and left the tent. When we got out of our tent, we saw their tracks all around our camp. We shared a silent look, realizing the seriousness of the situation. It was a reminder of how close we had come to danger knowing that these majestic creatures had been so close to us without us even realizing. We quickly packed our things, the urgency to leave this ominous place overshadowing our desire to continue the hike. 